What's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about why medical school is so tough, why residency is so tough, in general, why is medical training so tough, and why does it make sense? You know, a lot of people complain to me, oh, I'm in medical school, I'm studying all the time, it's so tough, oh man, why did I do this? People are in residency, uh, you know, they're telling me, oh my God, I'm on call like every other night, I'm always awake, I'm not sleeping, I'm getting yelled at by my attendings, whatever. Everyone's always complaining about something, right? But I think if you, you know, no doubt, medical training is tough, but if you don't have the right mindset, man, but that mindset of complaining and seeing everything as pain is not a very healthy one. And I used to have an unhealthy mindset so, until I kind of figured out what's the point of all, sorry, my, my car kind of rattles. I got to feel like that so it stops. Uh, fancy. Uh, but what's the point of all this medical training and what's the point of what they're doing to us? Why is it so hard? And once, you know, I came to my own understanding of why I think that is, it's like you come to peace with it. You don't even mind. You know, you accept the pain of what's going on now. So the analogy I came up with to kind of understand why is medical training in general so difficult is an analogy to how people are trained in the military. Now, I've never been in the military, so I can't make any comments, and maybe what I'm saying is wrong, but just kind of go with my analogy to kind of get the understanding of what I'm trying to teach. Now, if you think about when you applied to medical school, you know, early on, they started asking you, and that is the people who are going to be accepting you to medical school, to behave in a certain way. And you may have not even noticed that at that early point in your career when you were an undergrad. When you were applying on the AMCAS application, you know, they wanted you, you know, in a way, to have shown your interest or dedication to medicine. You, you know, hopefully would have shadowed some physicians or done some type of volunteering or been in an emergency room or done some research or shown some leadership um, positions. These kind of things that everyone always talks about. Now, if you think about it, what have all people who are going to medical school done those things if they weren't applying? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But to an early degree, you were kind of being trained on do certain activities because we expect it and do them if you want to get into medical school. Very early on, they're almost shaping you on how you're supposed to behave. Now, once you get into medical school, that just continues. You know, you're in the medical school, basic sciences, you're in the first two years. They're telling you early on, we expect you to um, operate at a very high academic level. We're going to give you a ton of lectures every day. We're going to give you a lot of exams. We're going to move quick and we expect you to keep up and we expect you to do well. You know, again, shaping you, shaping your mind, setting high expectations. And the clinical years of medical school come along. Now really big change is happening. They expect you to dress a certain way and to behave a certain way and to act a certain way. And that is, you know, you got to wear like professional clean clothing. You got to wear your white coat. You have to join a medical team, you know, a, a rounding service on the inpatient. You got to be part of that team. You have to be polite and respectful towards the attending. You have to respect the hierarchy of, you know, attending fellow senior, junior resident, intern, med student, etc. You got to be aware of this hierarchy and play into it and you know be respectful and understand you don't you know go complain to the attending you talk to your resident first you know there is this understanding and then also the professionalism of okay now you're you know you're a medical student you're in the clinical years we expect you to act a certain way a more mature way uh, and then they even teach you we want you to present patients in a certain way we want you to examine patients in a way we want you to come up with differentials in a certain way. They give you the vitamins, mnemonic, or whatever. You know, they start telling you how to essentially become a doctor, how to think, how to work, and even how to behave. And they even go so far as to tell you in your professional life what's expected of you as a physician because you're seen as a professional member of the community and how you're held up to a higher standard than others. Now, go on to residency, this only gets more intense. Now you're responsible for patients and attendings want you to get things done for them in a certain way. You're expected again to dress a certain way and you're wearing a long coat. Um, you're, you know, you're, you're expected to be professional and to run this service, not have any mess ups. You, know, you don't come up with excuses when things go wrong. You 
you're supposed to manage things and be amazing and never have problems. Now, that's, a, that's like the great resident. Now, that whole process, man, you ask anyone, or if you ask yourself if you're at any stage in that process, it's not easy. It's kind of painful. It's pretty hard. Um, but again, why do they do this? And if you kind of see that story we went along, it's all about change and modeling you into something. Now, let's take a military analogy and apply it to what just we just talked about in medicine. Now, you know, watch a simple documentary on YouTube about like military recruits and like their first process or like Marines coming in and being like initiated. It's almost like the similar um, thing they'll always show you in the documentaries. They'll have a bunch of young um, civilians essentially come in on a bus, they'll go into like a area and they'll all get essentially quickly tuned up to, listen guys, you're no longer in the world, now you're in the military this example. We expect different things of you. Uh, everyone stand up and be quiet and listen when we're talking. There's no interruption. They're teaching you hierarchy. They're telling you how do you address other people. Whether you use the word captain or sergeant or lieutenant. I don't know any of these words, so please excuse me if I'm using them incorrectly. But again, you get the point. They're telling you there are positions of hierarchy and you will respect it. Um, and the same thing we do in medicine. They go so far as to cut people's hair and dress them all the same. We don't go that far in medicine, but to some degree we do. Sure, you're not being put in a chair and having your hair buzz and all wear the same kind of uh, clothing. But what we do do in medicine is we kind of do the same thing in a more subtle way. If your hair is all messy and dirty, and it was for me, I used to have hair down to here when I was an undergrad and it was curly and I didn't care because it was fun. But pretty early when you get into medicine, you know, a lot of doctors start telling you, hey, why don't you get a cleaner haircut? Why don't you tidy it up? Or some people are more aggressive and they'll tell you, you're not coming into my clinic looking like that. And I'm like, oh, this is awkward, you know? Or you have to, you know, as a guy, I'm always getting this feedback, you know, make sure you wear a tie, make sure you look a certain way, you know? And some people care and some don't, but overall, there is this overall theme of, we want you to dress and behave a certain way. And in the military, you're not allowed to, you know, be sloppy and do whatever you want. You gotta have a clean appearance, wear the certain clothes, they want you to wear etc and then during for example to go back to this analogy in your military training you're doing physical exercise they're getting you tuned up you're all doing the same things very difficult hard exercise getting you in shape doing lots of um, you know practicing techniques flying you here doing a bunch of different things getting you trained up to a point so you can perform your task and it's all very difficult so the way I've come to terms with understanding know how to deal with the difficulties of medical training whether it be in medical school or in residency is to think of it as the same analogy as in the military that everyone who joins the military has to go through this uphill battle of going from being essentially a civilian into becoming someone that has a certain behavior a certain ethic work conduct behavior um, understanding and skill set so that you can operate at a very high level and be very proud as a military personnel and operate in that way and medicine is very similar we take you as like a pre-med student in college with all your wax and different things about you and we get you essentially prepared to be an attending physician we take you into medical school we show you how to study uh, we end you enter the clinical years we teach you the hierarchy uh, we expect certain behavior we expect a certain appearance uh, we expect you know essentially respect within the hierarchy and we want you to behave and get a skill set to function at a certain level and then we put you in residency and we fine tune that and we raise your expertise and your performance and your ability to perform certain tasks within your specialty that you picked and then after that, you go on to either fellowship or residency. And that's like, you know, you're an adult working now. So essentially, you're taking an undergrad who's got whoever they are and raising them over the course of medical school and residency into someone who's an independent, autonomous physician, who's professional, respected, and, you know, a leader in the community. And you're doing the same thing in the military. You're taking a young person who's, you know, growing up doing whatever, and they're in, they enter the military, they get trained, they get... Uh, you know, put into this environment, they grow, and at the end, they're like an autonomous agent who's working for the military and doing a specific task. So when you think of it in this kind of military analogy, it just helps me come to terms with what's going on. No one's trying to mess with you. No one, I mean, some people are messing with you, and some people are mean in residency and in medical school. There's no doubt about that, you know. We've all had episodes where you're like, man, that person's just not nice. But in general, 
the whole process of the medical training is not designed to mess with you. It's not designed to ruin your life. It's not designed to, you know, make anything worse. All it's doing is trying to take you from, you know, wherever you started, whether you're a traditional or a non-traditional applicant, they're trying to take you from wherever you were and get you to the level of an operating and reliable, safe professional attending physician. And that process is gonna be hard, it's gonna be difficult, just like the Marines. You know, the, the Marines are much more any kind of military. It's a lot easier to visually appreciate it. Just think about yourself going along that process. You know, they're telling you how to dress, they're telling you how to think, they're getting you tuned up. And the same thing in medicine, that's what they're doing to us. All right, guys, I hope this analogy helps you come to terms with what's going on. You know, I, when, when I started thinking about this analogy in a military way, it just helped me to think, you know what? I'm just paying my dues, I'm getting my training, I'm gonna get to the end, and I'm gonna be able to operate independently as an attending, I'll be ready to go. And that kind of thinking put a lot of ease in my mind, and I wasn't as upset or tired and like, oh man, residency and medical school, you know, they were so hard. Now I'm much more happy about it. So I hope this mindset, this thinking, this analogy helps you. Hope it brings some relief into your head. If you have any questions or different ways that you think about this, drop it in the comments below. I read them all. I even try to reply to a lot of them. Um, let me know what you think, kind of see what, how you guys cope with this process. All right guys, hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, enjoy your studies.